it has been said that we live in a land of laws. Like it or not, just about every single part of our lives has become legislated or litigated in one way or another. From how hot coffee is served to us at fast food restaurants to what constitutes indecency. Here we present to you a brief background on the various laws that affect you as a musician and why these laws exist. At the core of our legal system is the protection of our personal rights as human beings. We make certain assumptions about our daily lives, and those assumptions are mostly dictated by common sense. All human beings have an inherent pre-existing zone of safety that others should not violate. For the most part, we just assume that people should not harm the personal rights of other human beings, from criminal matters such as murder and theft, to civil matters such as negligency, causing injury, or even causing harm. So from these personal rights stem the business end of the entertainment industry. As an artist, you, your most important rights come from what you choose to do with your unique skills. For example, you own the exclusive rights to your services as a recording artist or uh, I mean or a songwriter until you give those rights away to someone else. The same goes for the right to use your face, right to use your name or the image you have created in connection with the sale of any products. You only have to look at the fortunes made from recording contracts and the sale of merchandise to understand that these personal rights are the most valuable rights in our business. The next level of rights in our discussion consists of property rights. From the time you are a baby clutching to a stuffed animal and screaming, mine, to checking the accuracy of your seven-figure royalty check for a hit record. You probably have a sense of what property rights are and how valuable they can be. There are three major legal categories of property. That is the real property or the real estate, i.e. homes, water, such kind of rights. The property right, that is the property right. So we also have a personal property. That is the all forms of money, cars, musical instruments, and intellectual property. That is the copyrights, trademarks, and patents. While it is relatively easy to understand the nature of real and personal property, the major focus of the practicing lawyer in the music field is on intellectual property. Intellectual property is self-defining. It is the property of the intellect. That is the property of the mind. You can't feel or touch intellectual property initially because it is that extremity, or I mean, the, or, or, of, of the or, uh, that extremely, sorry, it is that extremely valuable property floating around in your brain, waiting to come out in a flash of brilliance, I mean, in some form that become tangible. One of the intents, I mean, of many constitutional laws like the U.S. one was to encourage citizens to use these minds to create. As our nation developed, the various forms of creation were monetized or converted into financial reward, as laws offered the creators different kinds of protections for the different kinds of intellectual property that they produce. These laws eventually developed into the whole field of intellectual property that we have today. So let's look at some examples of intellectual property, how it is protected, and how the owner 
can use that protection to convert intellectual property into something of value that can be traded in commerce. Intentions, sorry, I mean inventions. Inventions are a form of intellectual property protected by patents. In every, uh, in very basic terms, it, if you were to create a new invention or a process for doing something, you could apply for a patent. If the patent and trademark office determines that your invention or process to be original and issue you a patent, it will give you the exclusive right to exploit your invention for a set period of time. During this period of exclusivity, others who would like to create and sell products using your patent will have to pay you a negotiated fee to use your patent. Examples of patents in the music industry over the years include equipment inventions, that is the electric guitars uh, and CDs, new processes like a multi-track recording, method of sound production in, in synthesizers, and improvements in technology. Automated faders on mixing boards, mixing boards themselves, new materials used in guitar like strings, and ways in which a synthesizer can manipulate sound. Another form of intellectual property is a trade secret. If you were to come up with an idea, that is original, uh, identifiable and unique. You could protect it by entering into a non-disclosure agreement, that is the NDA, with anyone who you may disclose the idea. The NDA is the formal legal equivalent of putting your index finger across your lips lowering your voice to a whisper and saying shh don't tell anyone this secret if people to whom you disclosed your idea should use that idea you could seek damages from them for your loss of potential revenue and business due to the breach of your non-disclosure agreement however if people to whom you are disclosing your idea had independent, I mean, independent previous knowledge of your idea, they may have worked on a similar kind of project or product in the past or if your idea is not so unique and is relatively common knowledge to the general public, it will be difficult for you to enforce an NDNA. Unique skills are another kind of intellectual property, often protected by agreement in the music industry. This is a variation of the spirit of the NDNA and is called a non-competition agreement. When businesses pay huge amounts of money to individuals because of their unique artistic or uh, executive talents, they want to know that the purchase of those unique talents will not be available to competitors. For example, when one record company purchases another, it is not unusual for the purchasing company to ask the departing executives of the purchased company to refrain from running another label for a reasonable period of time. This gives the purchasing company time to establish itself in the marketplace without fear of the competition that made the purchased company valuable in the first place. Most courts try not to prevent people from making a living. However, so the courts, uh, the, the, the courts closely consider the land uh, the, the land, geographical area, and uh, scope of non-competing agreements to make sure that they are fair and reasonable. So now, here we come to trademark and copyright. Patents, trade secrets, and unique services are all 
valuable and important types of intellectual property that are protected regularly in any industry. However, the importance of the protection does not compare to the prevalence the an importance of what I like to refer to as the big two forms of intellectual property in our industry. That is the trademarks and copyrights. So we are surrounded by trademarks in the music industry. Names of acts, record labels, slogans, names of tours, and brands of music instruments are all examples of marks that are valuable commodities in the entertainment business. Making a trade name identifiable to the public can be the difference between success and failure for any kind of business venture. This becomes especially crucial in any industry or in our industry, that is, where brand recognition and loyalty are the keys to making sure that audiences keep coming back to buy tickets, recordings, and other products. The intellectual property protected by trademark law is the source of goods or services. Trademarks are the names used in connection with goods. Service marks are the names used in connection with services. For simplicity, I will refer to both of them as trademarks. By creating, maintaining, and protecting a strong trademark, your business can exclusively use the trademark and prevent others from using it. Because only you own and legally use the trademark. It helps prevent confusion in the marketplace as to the source of the goods bearing that mark. Trademarks are given to businesses such as bands or record labels because the owners want their businesses to have an identity distinct from all the other businesses in the same field. To establish a trademark, you must first make sure that your trademark is a fanciful name, not one that is simply descriptive, for example, the purple Lordine Twins. It's more likely to be considered a valid trademark than a band with two guitarists and a singer. One way to establish your trademark in the marketplace is simply by using it. For example, if you are an act using your name or promotional material and recordings is an excellent way to introduce and strengthen your trademark in the marketplace. The extent of your trademark's uh, marketplace is determined through your usage. If you live in a small town on the East Coast, for example, and only play live shows that are limited to within the borders of your town, it will be difficult to prevent another band on the other side of the country from using the same name. However, if you have a CD available to the entire nation, through a website, your marketplace is extended accordingly. You can also secure a trademark before actually using it by applying for trademark registration through, uh, I, I mean, any country's patent and trademark office under an intent to use, that is the status. When using this method, you can um, essentially reserve the right to a trademark until you are ready to use it in the marketplace. A general idea of uh, helpful information can be found in, in any patent office, I mean in any country. Most have at least trademark offices and trademark websites. Distinct from all the other types of intellectual property, copyright law protects the expression of an idea in a tangible medium. Obviously, this spreads far and wide as copyright laws include the protection of musical compositions, that is the audio and visual recordings, artwork, lyrics, and computer programs. The protection and exploitation of sound recording, that is the SR copyrights make up 
what we have come to know as the record business says. I mean, whereas the protection and exploitation of the performance acts, that is the PA copyrights, make up the music publishing business. The combination of these two versions of copyrights is the basis of virtually the entire music economic landscape. Copyright ownership is established as soon as the expression of an idea is fixed in a tangible medium. The tangible medium can take a variety of forms, anything from writing lyrics on a piece of scrap paper to recording on a computer, to making a full-blown studio recording of an entire band. The creation of the copyrighted work is not to be confused with the registration of the work with the register of copyrights at the Library uh, of Congress, maybe in the States. Uh, think of copyright registration as having a record of your work in a centralized database that provides a much more conv convenient way to prove your ownership than searching through your own files. The copyright law encourages you to register your works by providing for added benefits in the event of copyright infringement of your registered work. These benefits include the possible uh, awarding of statutory money damages and attorney's fees in the case of any form of infringement. Once a song or master recording is created, a number of rights are attached to it. These rights include the exclusive right of the copyright holder to make uh, copies, to perform, to display, to make changes, to publish, to perform sound recordings by way of digital transmission, and to make phono recordings of all configurations of the work. The ability to make and sell recordings, to collect money from radio or public performances, and to use the recordings or songs on televisions or movies, or sorry, or movies, all are based these rights that are established by copyright. Copyright infringement, also known as a plagiarism, requires two elements. One is that the infringing work needs to sound sub substantially similar to the original. The second is that the infringing party must have hard access to the original work. The subject of copyright infringement is a good opportunity to point out an industry practice that many novices to the industry find quite frustrating. The rejection of unsolicited demo submissions. In an effort to avoid potential copyright infringement actions, many music industry businesses simply do away with the second element of infringement equation by not accepting submissions unless the person submitting it has a pre-existing connection. The logic is pretty straightforward. If no one associated with the business ever had the work, no one at the company could have copied it. This practice can be very frustrating to anyone who might logically interpret the industry as being one of the exclusion and old boy networking. I will not deny that such networking is a reality in any social and business situation. I will also encourage those who are frustrated by this apparent exclusion to keep trying because eventually they will find a way through the door. Just remember that it's usually a lawyer's option and opinion keeping your submission from getting through the door. Yes, the lawyer, not the hard-working creative people listening to the music and not the quality of your demo. Intellectual property law is exciting and challenging because it is always fueled by technology. From the printing press to the lightning fast personal computers of today. The te technology that affects the music business and I mean, has changed almost daily. Uh, making intellectual property law one of the most fluid bodies of law ever. 
For these reasons, I will approach the intellectual property law throughout uh, uh, the, 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 this talk in broad strokes and general terms, especially as it relates to ever-changing issues of music distribution via computers and the internet. Otherwise, specific, uh, you know, uh, discussions of new technology in uh, this discussion will surely be obsolete as soon as the ink, uh, you know, dried on the paper on which it, it was printed. The issues surrounding personal and property rights should uh, not encourage musicians to function forever alone in a vacuum. We live in a society that, uh, that encourages interaction. Those who interact with each other need to uh, establish boundaries, ground rules, and consequences for breaking the rules. The resulting body of law is contract law, the law that governs and protects agreements between people. Many entertainment lawyers spend their entire careers negotiating and drafting the various agreements that are special to our industry. A great deal of uh, this talk is devoted to helping you understand the background, the elements, and some of the subtleties of these contracts. The law dealing with uh, your personal rights, property rights, and contractual relationships are the main bodies of law that make up the bulk of what you need to know to function in the music business. Of course, uh, uh, law specialties come into play as well if you are touring internationally. Immigration law is important. Corporate and employment law are crucial as your team and business grows. At some point in your career, you may encounter situations that will require seeking further legal knowledge and or advice on taxes, family, and marital matters, criminal issues, and First Amendment issues. So here we have companion questions. Number one, are you a proactive personality or a reactive personality? Number two, do you proceed with caution and a sure footing or are you a risk taker? Number three, do you feel that the paperwork and formalities slow down or inhibit the creative process? Number four, when developing personal relationships of any kind, do you carefully screen the people with whom you get involved or do you enter into your relationships quickly and sort out the details as you go along? Number five, what are the various types of intellectual property that you intend to create in your lifetime? Do you understand or are you willing to learn how to protect these properties? Number six, if you are developing an act, does the act push the envelope creatively, behaviorally, or politically? Is one of the hooks of your act being controversial or acting wild? Number seven, reflecting on how you have answered the preceding questions, I'm uh, sorry, the preceding questions. Would you rather document your creative path with a contract law, that is the front end, negotiation approach, or wait for issues to arise and then take care of them with a dispute resolution back end negotiation approach? Lastly, number eight. Do you enjoy the business end of the music business? Do you like to be involved in the process with the people whom represent you? So, uh, is this now a hypothetical situation? That is, is it a dream or a nightmare? A group of musicians get together every weekend playing old rock and roll songs for the fun of it in the garage of Barry, the bass player. 
One day, as the musicians are warming up, they slip into a groove unlike any song that they have ever played before. Everyone in the band contributes to the song as it takes shape. Lil, uh, lyrics and melodies flow as the band members combine their musical efforts to create a great song completely from scratch. The drummer Danny wants to remember the great time they were all having, so he makes a videotape recording of their rehearsal. In the process capturing the entire completed song, I mean original song that the band has written and performed from beginning to end. While they are playing, a stretch limousine carrying Mr. Big, one of the biggest music executives in the country, has a flat tire in front of Barry's garage. The limo driver asks if Mr. Big can hang out while the tire is being fixed. The band welcomes him, serving him a lemonade as he listens. Mr. Big is impressed by their musicianship and uh, the new song so much, in fact, that Mr. Big calls his company and arranges for a contract to be immediately brought to the garage so Mr. Big can sign the group to an exclusive artist deal. Telling them that he wants to keep the raw street qualities. Or the band, I mean. Mr. Big asks if he could have the homemade tape uh, to release as their first single. He also asks what the name of the band is, telling them that he is never, I mean, he has never seen such rehearsal fanatics in his life. The band agrees to let him have a copy of the tape and decides on the spot that the name of the band is Rehearsal Fanatics. Six months later, the Rehearsal Fanatics are the darlings of the industry. They have sold an astonishing 4 million copies of their recordings, are on a major national tour, and are appearing on late night television shows, catapulted by the success of their unique home movie, single and the favorable pressure surrounding their rags to riches story. Unfortunately, the fame gets to some of their heads and while leaving a concert venue, Sammy the Fanatics uh, lead singer beats up a photographer who is trying to shoot a candid photo of the band. The photographer has threatened a lawsuit against the entire band for the attack. They also find out that another band has been using the name the Rehearsal Fanatics for the past five years and is now seeking financial compensation for trademark infringement. Finally, Danny the drummer quits the group in the midst of all the confusion, demanding that the record label immediately stop allowing radio and television stations from using the promotional tape that he owns. He also is making a claim against Mr. Big and the label for stealing his patented home video. The rest of the band members are demanding to be released from their artist contract unless they get a substantial advance. The label is threatening to prevent the band from making any more records from any other label, claiming ownership of the band name. What problems await the members of the rehearsal fanatics and what bodies of law exist to settle all their potential disputes? Thank you.